Good evening, uh, though it's clearly not the evening when this was recorded. Welcome to SGT. Now, you may be wondering, what is SGT? That's a great question. For weeks now, I made YouTube videos trying to help out my math students and other students trying to learn these concepts that are presented to them online. And these videos, while useful, have been very much by the numbers. Um, so I, I wanted to reach out to my fellow teachers, um, asking or begging them for some good teaching, something to help motivate our students and provide something a little bit more interesting and a little bit better than just watching me do problems. Um, so we created some good teaching, SGT. Um, and we borrowed a lot from John Krasinski's Some Good News, um, but I really think that this will help you guys out. So without further ado, this is SGT. I'm John Whitney. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Now, let's get into some good teaching. Before our spring break became our summer break, uh, we solved some equations that we call quadratics. Let's go to our field reporter, Coach Dub, on this. Coach Dub? What's up, hey, Mr. Whitney? Uh, so, um, so I have a problem, and um, I, I really just I can't figure it out. Uh, can I show it to you? Absolutely. Let's take a look at okay. it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's this thing. Um, it, it, it's just it's going up, then it's going down, or it's going down, then it's going up. I just can't get heads or tails of it. Ah, that um, looks like What a... should I do to solve it? Well, you can open up Desmos, okay. and then you can you can do it graphically. All right. Well, let's let's give that a shot. Um, I I have it on my computer here, but I know I could have done it on my phone. Um, so is that looking like uh, Desmos for you? Yes, it is. All right. So where should I be looking for my solutions? All right. So the solutions to a quadratic equation, also known as a parabola or a parabola, for some of you, uh, you're looking for where it crosses the x-axis. Those are your solutions. So if so you like, put all the x-axis and look for where it crosses, you can find your solution. Okay, so like these two points here and here? That is correct. So should I be putting down um, the x, like negative 4, or should I be putting down the y, the 0? Uh, you'd be putting down the x value. The x value is going to be your solution. Okay, so I should have something where I say like x equals negative 4, and x equals one? Correct. Something that kind of looks like this bit, right? Yes, it does, yes. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, so let's go ahead. And um, now, unfortunately, I have more than one problem. So let's, I, I, do you mind if I show you another one? Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time here with this. I know oh, no, that's great. Right. Always right. got time. All right, so here's another thing that I have a problem with, um, and I just can't figure out. It's it's six x plus x minus one equals zero. All right, well, that one looks a little more difficult. You probably can't do that by graphing. We're gonna have to do that by the box method. Well, I went ahead and I tried to graph it, but one, I think the problem is is my calculator was a whiteboard and not actually a calculator. Um, and then the second thing is it looks like it kind of falls between points. Like I know that this, I have a solution over here, right? Uh, right. But it's like between zero and one. So I, I, I can't just put it into my calculator. It's not showing me anything. Um, one, because my calculator is this board and this pin, but two, because it's just in between points. Um, so is there something that we could do that doesn't involve our calculator to solve this? Yes, and I'm sure our kids are hollering right now that we could use the box method. All right. Well, let's give that a shot. I'm going to try to draw it down here. I know it's going to be backwards, but let's, let's try to work through this. So we said our problem was this thing, the, the 6x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Mm -hmm. So what can I do here to, to work on solving that? All right. So draw a window pane with four areas. Okay, something like this. Right, and so in the top left one, you're going to put your A value, or you're okay. gonna put your six X squared. Okay, so I'll put six X squared here. And then in your bottom right, you're gonna put negative one. 
All right, I'll put that there. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the peanut or what goes in the middle. Okay, so like these two boxes. Right, right. Cool, and cool, so cool. Uh, looking at the original equation, let's go ahead and identify our A, our B, and our C values. Okay. I assume that it's going, you know, A, B, C. Right, like, alphabetical okay. order. So A, B, and C. Now, for our B thing, we don't have any number here. So what's our B value? Your B value is going to be 1. Okay. I'll go ahead and put that in front of the X just to clean it up a bit. Very good. I like that. All right. And so then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply A times C. All right. Do that over here. So six times, is it one or negative one? It's going to be a negative one, John. All right. And six times negative one, I believe that's negative six. Correct. All right. All right. So now we're going to be looking for a value that when you multiply it together, gives you negative six. But when you add those two numbers together, you get positive one. And that is our. So you can look at the factors of negative six. Okay. So if I was listing them out, I might start with one, because one times any numbers itself. So one times negative six. And then could I reverse the signs just to get kind of more variance there? Yes, like you do can. Like do negative one and positive six. Yes, you can. Cool. And cool. then let's see, you can go, let's go up one and let's try two. Okay. Two I is mean. with negative three. Right. And then you can reverse those signs. So negative two and positive three. Correct. All right. And then if you add those two values together, what you're looking for is for one set to equal positive one. Okay. Well, I think that's the negative two and positive three. Because if I add those together, I get positive one. All right. So and I, there you go. There's your two peanut values. All right. So let's put those in. Does it matter which one goes where? No, it does not. All right. And uh, anything, so am I good with the negative two and positive three, or am I done there? Uh, you're gonna need to add the X. Okay, put those in. All right, there we go. Now we're set up and ready to go. All right, so what from here? Where do I go? Do I just put a six out here because there's six X? Uh, well, if I'm looking at the two numbers, you have a three and a two. So what I like to do is, make sure that my x values I've put for six are going to be factorable with two and three. Okay, so like for this one, since this is six and three, you're saying like, when you say factorable, you mean like they go into both of them. So what goes into Correct. both six and three? Well, that would be a three. And do I put an x as well? Yes, since you there's put x's an x. In, mm -hmm. Okay. And then what about for six and two? All right, so to get six from three, you'd be multiplying by two, so you put two x. And there's an x in both these, so we put the x, cool. All right, and then we're just looking at what multiplies out, like in terms of the box? Right, so now you're gonna look at, let's look at the three x first. So to get from three okay. x to positive three x, what are we multiplying by? Uh, just one. All right. And then to get from 2x to negative 2x, what are we multiplying by? Well, it's since it's the same number, I know that there's a 1 there, but it changed sign. So I'm right, thinking so it's going to be a negative. Cool. And there are your two factors. We have 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. All right. So in other words, what we did was we said that we have 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. And the original thing equals zero, so this equals zero now, right? Right. But if you remember from the first equation that we were looking at on Desmos, you're looking for where x equals a number. So what you're going to do is you're going to take each set of parentheses and set them equal to zero. Okay, so like 2x plus 1 equals zero, and 3x minus 1 equals zero. So Correct. we have these two equations here. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, so where to from here? All right, so you're going to take each of those equations and you're going to solve them algebraically. Okay, so to get rid of plus one, I would minus one from both sides. 
Correct. So I'd have 2x equals negative 1. And then to get rid of the 2 in front, that's multiplying. So, so I divide, divide both sides by 2. OK. So essentially, I would end up with negative 1 half? Correct. OK. And that makes sense, right? Like one of my solutions on my graph was between 0 and negative 1. That one's it. So I'm right. kind of taking this 1 and this 2. I'm just putting the 1 over the 2 and then changing the sign. Correct. Cool. So like on this one, if I went through it, I should have 1 to both sides. I get 1 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. I'd have, well, these would cancel. I'd have 1 third. And as you can see, that one third, it lies between zero and one, which is what we're looking at on your graph. Perfect. All right, so we have two solutions. So we know that our solution is one third and negative one half. So that seems to work out really well. Thank you so much for helping me with my problem, Coach Dub. You're welcome, Mr. Whitney. All right, uh, so that's it. Um, thank you, Coach Dub, for that good teaching. Now, I want to address something uh, that I saw in the Zoom meeting that we had last week. Now, we have a Zoom meet every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Um, Jonathan Evans made a comment. He said, I stayed up for 26 hours doing work. Jonathan, buddy, I have two comments for you. One, I'm worried about you. You need to work on that sleep schedule. And two, take breaks. Even when you're doing work, if you're trying to learn something, taking breaks helps you learn. Plus, it helps you not go insane. Um, so that's why I'm going to introduce a segment, and now for something completely different. Now, some of you might be saying, John, you're introducing, this whole show is an introduction. It's a brand new show. You're right. But now we're going to do something completely different and not math. So while we're all stuck at home, stories can help us escape, uh, can help us learn, can help just in general help us. Um, so... Stories can come in all forms, uh, from video games about a tiger being your neighbor to um, Netflix shows about a tiger king just being an awful person. Now, I unfortunately am a math teacher, so I can't know anything about reading. If only there was someone who could help me. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Claire Whitney. She's an amazing reading teacher, and uh, yeah, so would you like me to get you a seat? Yeah, sure. Okay, so that worked. Um, ready to begin? Yes. All right, cool. Um, so I wanted to ask you about reading. Um, as mm -hmm. far as I understand it, you have to be around other people in a classroom to be able to read. Is that the case? No. Huh. How? Just really? Like, no. Okay. You can read anywhere. Like, okay. literally anywhere. Okay, um, but what about books? Books are expensive, right? Not necessarily. There's ways to get some for free. Go on. So there's a couple options that you guys have that you don't even have to leave your couch for to get books. Um, so there, for our school, there is the Sora app, S-O-R-A. If you haven't heard about that, it's ebooks and audiobooks through our library. All you have to do is download the app, Sora, S-O-R-A. You can also go to their website and you pick out your school, which is Cypress Fairbanks ISD. You sign in with your S number and your login password, and you can check out books on your phone and just simply read on your phone for free. Great. Um, yeah, is, is there any books that you recommend in particular? So I just finished Stargirl. It was okay. Eh. But I really like the Marvel comics. They have comics on there as well in color. The um, Black Panther is great. They have four volumes. I really like Ms. Marvel and Adventures of Squirrel Girl. Sounds great. Um, well, I'll be sure to put the link for all this mm -hmm. in the description down below here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Anything else that you would like to add? Yes. Two other options if you didn't, the school library wasn't working for you. Harris County Public Library has their own app called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. You have to make a digital account. Um, you can do that for the I Know Digital Access Card system. Just Google stuff, things. I'll send him links so that you can find it. Make a card. You can go on. They have even more stuff. They have magazines, music, even more audiobooks, regular books, tons of stuff, and things you can read to your annoying little siblings. The other free option, too, is Audible. 
Audible is doing some super cool stuff right now to help people out during this time, and they have made free access to certain books on their online. It's the uh, stories.audible.com, and on there, I particularly enjoyed Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and the Harry Potter series. All right, that sounds really good. I'll be sure to link all of that down below so that you guys can find that. And I, and I can teach you how to read so that you can do that too. That, that would be really useful, mm -hmm. uh, especially because I'm reading from a script right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Mrs. Whitney. You're welcome. It's really weird to call you that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go back to uh, focusing on my problems. Now, I've gotten a report from my producer. Um, well, thanks Odin, for this. Um, that says that uh, there is a way that we can solve quadratic equations with just plugging numbers into a formula. Um, and we're now going live, live, um, to a uh, to Mrs. Lowe on that. So, Mrs. Lowe. Hi. Hey, um, so hypothetically, if I had a problem, could I plug this into a formula? Indeed you can. Cool. What's that called? It's called a card it's called a quadratic formula. No worries. Okay, cool. Uh could you maybe like send me something so I could show everyone what this looks like, what this formula is? Yeah, let me shoot it to you right now. All right, cool. There you go. All right. There it is. There, there it is. So um, what are we seeing here? What does this mean? Okay, so when you have a quadratic equation, it needs to be in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Two things that are important. You need to have your x squared term first, then your x term, then your c, and needs to be set equal to zero. And if you cannot factor any other way, there's this nifty thing called the, called the quadratic formula that you can use. Now, keep in mind that actually, any other, uh, any quadratic that you use could be put into this formula. It's just that sometimes people like to try something that they consider easier and then try this. But if you want to always use this, it's great. There's the only time it doesn't work is if there are no real solutions, which we'll talk about at the end. All right, great. So hypothetically, if say this exact thing was my problem, could we solve it? Yes, we could. All right, and what should we do first? So the first thing we want to do is identify our A, B, and C. So remember, like we said earlier, we have to have a number in front of the X squared, a number in front of X, and then our C. So our A is going to be 2. Okay. Our B is going to be 3. And our C is negative 8. Remember that nose matters, negative 8. Okay, so this negative sign right here, or this minus sign counts minus for sign. what it goes inside. Negative. Right. Okay, cool. Um, and then... So now we need to plug it into the formula? Yes, now we're gonna plug it into that formula that we just talked about, the quadratic formula. Okay, so I wrote the formula down here. Mm -hmm. And um, so what should we do first? Okay, you see there's there are two Bs there. Those are the first two things we see. We're gonna take okay. the B up there, the three, and replace each of those Bs with a three. Okay. Keep in mind if that B had been negative, we would have put a negative in those parentheses. That's why it's so important that those parentheses are there. All right, so keep the parentheses, got it. Mm -hmm. And then I assume we just plug in our A's where the A's are and yes. the C where the, the C is? Exactly. Right. So let's put our A's and our C of negative eight. Right. Cool. Now all we need is a calculator if you don't wanna have to do it the long way. All right. But so we're gonna actually reduce this here, I guess. Yes, so that we can have a radical form and then use a calculator, right? Yeah, I think that would be better. Uh, my calculator is a little bit basic. And by a little okay. bit, I mean, uh, I got the free version. So okay. it, it looks something like this. Um, you guys may see a very similar calculator on your own um, on your own device. So I wanted to keep things kind of what you can do when, you know, I don't have anything special here. All right. All right. So what should we do first on this thing? Okay, so look at that negative out in front of the three. That means we're just going to change the sign. And since the sign was already positive, the whole thing becomes negative three. Okay. So, and then under there, under the radical, we see that it says take three and square it. So what's three times three? Well, nine. Right. We bring down that minus four. It's a minus because it's in the middle. 
and we're going to go on and multiply. I mean, you, you could do it any either way. I mean, you could just do, put it in your calculator, the four times the two times negative eight, but I'm just going to do the two and the negative eight right now. So two times negative eight is negative 16. Okay. And then I can use my calculator and multiply negative four times that negative 16 to change that number. Okay, so like that bit Better. there. Yes, that bit there. And if we were to do that, I think that would come out to positive 48. I think so. Okay. Let's confirm that. So let's say six times four is 24, 24 actually. 64. Right. Okay. I did my math wrong. That's right? four. That's what I said. The four, the tens place should be a four, I think. All right. So that whole section becomes 48. Is That's it positive, positive or negative 48? I thought it was positive 64. Oh, 64. My bad. My mistake there. All right. Okay. And then we're going to add the nine plus the 64. Okay. Oh, let's look at the bottom real quick before we do that. Just so we have okay. it. So below two times two on the bottom is four. Okay, just real simple there. Yeah, real simple. So now we would just combine the what's under the radical. Okay. And, and write everything else again, the way it is. All right, so let's do that. So we'll have X equals negative three plus or minus square root at nine plus 64, I believe comes out to 73. Mm -hmm. All right, and then this is a four down here. All right, and so now we have our two roots, a positive and a negative root. Um, so we're gonna write, we can write this as two separate ones, just so you know when you see it, that that's not just one number. So our first one is, right, negative, yes, over four. And see how it's at plus or minus? So the other one's just doing the same thing, but minus 73 over four. And we can right. further reduce so this, you know? Yeah, so, right? so calculator these two to. things are the same thing. It's just that one, we wrote plus minus uh, to kind mm -hmm. of make it more compact. The other one's expanding out a bit. Right. And keep All in right. mind that this, what we're doing, I just want to remind people, because some of the students forget this, we are looking for the roots or the zeros. We're trying to find where does it cross the x-axis. So that means these are numbers. These are, it's just that they're going to be decimal numbers if we don't, if we further put this in our calculator and go further. And they, we wouldn't be able to find that, right, with a, with a box or any other method we use, because it's going to be a decimal that is yeah. repeating. So. so it would be something like if we were graphing it, it's it's the numbers where it's crossing here. It's the right. points um, where it would be, okay, I have a point of negative three minus 70, square root of 73 over four, but our calculator right. is not telling us that. So we're trying to get right. something more exact. And so it looks ugly like that, but that's going to reduce to a decimal number and that's a place where it crosses. Okay, cool. Um, so if we wanted to solve this, um, mm -hmm. Could we put this all into a pretty basic calculator? Yes. All right. Um, but if you have a calculator that's a, what is that called? A scientific calculator that does that has square roots, you can just put this in your calculator. Are we gonna oh, do yes. that now? Um, so yeah, let me actually do it on a scientific okay. calculator. Okay. Um, and I'll just hold this up to the screen because okay. my technology has some limits here. Um, <laughs> okay. So, I'm gonna do the first one where negative three plus square root of 73. And then I'm gonna put that all over four. So right. we can see this up here. Yes. You can see exactly. that I did it in two steps, but mm -hmm. everything just kind of works out for it. And we exactly. get some, something like 1.38. So let's just eights. call that 1.4. Okay. And keep in mind the reason that Mr. Whitney did it in two steps is because if you do the top, um, then you have a number that you di then divide by the bottom. So we don't have to worry about the order of operations issues. Yeah, you use so, a basic calculator. so the yellow is why I did in my first step. This blue is why I did my second step. Excellent. And we can do the same thing for the second problem where we right. put the top in on one and the blue in on the second bit. So it's yes. the same thing, but with a minus sign. Right. And that looks like that comes out. It's the second two steps there to there a go. negative 2.88. So we're going to okay. say negative 2.9. So those are our negative and positive roots. It's going to cross on the left side of the um, x of the y axis on the right side. So if yeah. we saw our parabola, it would be um, straddling the y axis. So something like if, well, I'm doing a very terrible job of drawing here. But 
it would be 1.4 would be something like here and negative 2.9 would be something like here. Right. And I have no idea how this thing originally well, upside looked. down or let's see. I, I it's think a it started with a smiley a face. I, yeah. I'm, I'm just going for a guess here that it looks something <laughs> like this. And there um, we go. But, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for that, Miss Lowe. It really helps. Thank you. Now, while that was some amazing teaching, I know what you're thinking. That's great. I can use a formula on this. It's amazing. But I'm not invested unless there's a catchy jingle. You're in luck. I got you. Miss Seguin, take it away. Hey guys, in case you were looking for a song to get stuck in your head for the rest of the school year, um, I have just a song for you. It is the quadratic formula uh, to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. You ready? It goes like this. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Sing it with me. X equals negative B plus or minus the that's right. Square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's right, guys. Good job. We're back. Of course, we're back. But now, we're not. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Peace. We're good here? Yep. Come on. Probably should shut this down though. Feeding time yet? Alright.